time once again for the Real People Multi-Game Solitaire Mega Tournament. I'm coming uh, to you from the dark again, and you're probably not going to see this video until this situation has been remedied, but I've been without power. Uh, actually, everyone, everyone in my whole neighborhood, and I think uh, several thousand people in my area have been without power for a day now. Um, I don't know when it's going to be back up. The place where the power was cut down doesn't seem like they're doing anything there. So um, a big a big snowstorm dumped on the area. The area is not prepared for snow. And so we are all suffering for lack of preparedness. So plan ahead, people. Plan ahead communities. But I don't think you can plan ahead for everything. But it's we're lucky because this is, I think, probably the best game to play when you are without power and very cold. It's got such warm colors and it's simple. It's not a real brain burner. So it's I, I couldn't ask for a better game to be playing right now. So let's get to it. I don't know how much power I have. And, well, I do. I, I can see that there's three stripes worth of power on my battery out of four. So I don't know how much that is, but uh, we'll see what we can do. And maybe we'll be able to get two sessions in. We'll see. Begin with half pine. And as you can see, she's become quite mighty lately. Look how, look at all these cubes. She's going to test a newfound might against the harpy. She already lost the harpy once, and I don't know if I filmed that or not. But she gets four dice, and she has to get a five or less to shoot it with her halfling bow. And. Once again, the harpy has taken her down. That's really not so good, because now she's down to her last health. Once you're there, you want to be really careful. Ah, but she has this potion, so she'll go ahead and use it. I am not going to take the time to look up whether she has to wait until next turn to use it or not. I think she can just use it right now. All right, we are back to Curly now. Curly, um, as you may recall from last time, is in a bit of trouble. He is down to one life. And he has Weeder hot on his tail, so there's no way he can really um, outrun her. So that leaves his options uh, being just to move farther so that it's less convenient for her to take him. Or to try to attack her. Now let's, let's look at that option real quick. If he tried to attack her, what he could get out of it would be he could take one of her items, right? Problem is, is there's no item that would really stop her from defeating him and... You know, if he fails in attacking her, which is likely, uh, he would lose that life right then. And then, you know, be back there without his cubes and without a lot of stuff. And so that's maybe not the best option. Um, you know, because even, even if he does take a chance, if, if it does pay off, the payoff isn't even going to assure his success. So he has come up with another option that is a little unconventional. But Curly thinks of himself as a conniving person. And he is going to go here to the Gorgon and hope that he loses. Um, now the Gorgon, as you may recall, has the penalty of lowering your movement by one. Okay? So that's not going to be good for him. You know, his movement is pretty much assured to go down by one. And I'm pretty much... Pretty sure I don't. I don't know if they have an auto success on Snake Eyes or not. I'm not going to look it up unless he rolls Snake Eyes. Um, the thing is, is if he dies, that that movement penalty is going to go away anyway. Um, problem. The thing for Weeder, she's already gotten the movement penalty once. If she gets it again, and it's it's it's, it's never going to go away because if she dies, she's out of the game. So I think that's what he's going to try. I gotta look up, however, to see if the Gorgon's penalty can can happen twice. If not, he's gonna to have to come up with something else. Scooch just did something rather cold. I don't know if you recall. She she found a, a little girl over here that she could have brought back to the White Village. However, right after that happened, um, the nightmare that was the next part of her quest, her anti-dragon quest, appeared right here. So she just took off with a girl flying up there. Remember, Half Pint was kind of on her, kind of on her heels. So she still had the girl. Um, she wanted a, to pick up a different quest, however, here, and so she had to look at the different quests she had. Um, so she has this one. This one, she mainly hang, hung on to because she doesn't want someone else to get it. Um, it wouldn't be bad for her to fulfill that quest either, but. Um, Tice is also in the neighborhood, and if Tice got that quest, it'd be very beneficial to her. It ups your 
ranged combat pretty well. Um, this gives her a magic ring if she completes that quest, which is a good way to get armor, I believe. Um, and then this one, it's very doable, for one. You, all she has to do is buy some boots at the market and then bring it to him. And then it, it's got a pretty good reward. Uh, so she hung on to this one. This is the one, incidentally, that she gave up the little girl in favor of, the one that lets you go to another player's house and steal one of their experience cubes. So, just a little bit about Scoots. And we're back underground with Weeder's turn. Weeder is not going to follow Curly into there. She thought about it. Um, it'd be nice to be able to take him out, but the process behind it would involve her very likely um, going down to a two movement rate, which is very, very slow. And so she is instead going to explore and put it right like that. And here's the another guy to shepherd somewhere. And this is Kronos. Let's see where he wants to go. He wants to go to Elysian. That's not too far away. So Curly is exploiting, in a way, maybe, he's using to his advantage the rules. I don't know if that's exploiting necessarily. Um, the rules state that you only have to battle a counter it, the, if you move onto the counter. Um, so Curly is not going to move at all, and so thus does not have to battle the Medusa again. He's just going to hold tight and hope that the um, storm that is Weeder blows over. And Fry's actually, uh, he doesn't feel like he can move down this way either because Fry's could then jump on him and take him out. Uh, so he's sitting tight. Speaking of Fry's, Fry's is also sort of sitting tight in a way. Fry's would like to be able to leave the underworld at this point. Um, however, he doesn't have any money to pay Cerebus, so right now, uh, at least until the... There's an alternate exit from the underworld that could be revealed at some point. Until that's revealed, he um, he's trapped. So he doesn't want to move, though, because then he loses all of his things. And so he's just kind of biding his time trying to, to beat Orion for that special bow. The bow which I don't think can leave the underworld. So any of the, the special weapons from the underworld have to stay down here. And once again, he didn't get the roll he needed. The scorpion just got revealed. That's the start of the um, the melee-related anti-dragon quest. Uh, no one in the overworld, however, <laughs> is very good at melee. They're all down, trapped in the underworld, having their little soap opera down here. So we'll see if that gets um, used or not. The dragon is attacking. This is this could be potentially be a game changer. So everyone except Half Pint, who's in the overworld, is going to pick a trial of their choice, and I'm going to rule that Red Tomato can combine his skills for this one at a minus three. If they lose, they lose an artifact. So we'll start with, let's see, Scoots is the most exciting one, I think, because she has these two very key artifacts here. Um, so we're going to start, let's start with Red Tomato. So Red Tomato's got to get a three or better, or he loses his boots. That's actually pretty, pretty big, too. And he kept his boots. That makes me so happy because I, you know, he, you got to root for an underdog, and right now he's been dogging it. Um, so now Tice, Tice gets to gets to use her bow. Um, now her artifacts. I don't know that she can actually lose them because from this event because they're quest artifacts. I, it, if I roll under a four, or if I roll over a four, I will have to check on that. And I did roll over a four, so I will have to check on that for her. Um, and then Weeder and Mooney. Mooney's got several artifacts. Not that he's that cares that much about them, but he has to get a four less. And so he's going to lose one. Um, I think he'll choose to lose this one right here. Well, no. There's some interesting magic trials. I think he'll choose to lose this one. Um, and then finally we'll do... Scoots. Scoots is either going to lose her magic broom or her lightning. Both of those are pretty important. Um, she's got to get a four or better. And she got a six. That's not enough. She is going to choose to lose the lightning in this case. 
<laughs> I looked it up to find out the issue with Tice. It turns out she would have lost one of her um, artifacts. However, since Red Tomato was successful and he was the first one in the fight with the dragon, everyone else is free. So he, he basically fought off Red Tomato, our tiny little gnome in, rolled a three and fought off the dragon for everyone. So they all get their artifacts back, which is pretty important to Scoots. He might have just won the game for her. Fry's rolled another four against Orion. He is getting close to that three that he needs. So Scoots just impressed some mice into telling her the, um, the, the identity of the nameless. So there are several different nameless in this game, for those of you who don't know. See those cards there? Those are all nameless cards. These are all dragon cards. There's different dragons too, so you don't know exactly what you're going up against. Um, they have different penalties and different bonuses. So she now knows the nameless's identity and can better prepare for that. Weeder just used this, her Thunderbolt of Zeus in order to finally beat one of these gray dot monsters. It gives her a, a temporary plus two. She rolled a seven, so if she hadn't used it, she would she would have lost um, to that thing. Um, so she gets a new treasure, and let's see what it is. Ooh, more nectar. Mooney's Aqualad is moving here, and wolves! He's got a roll against wolves. And the wolves have bitten him. He is almost on his death's door once again. Half Pine's taking on a spider. Incidentally, she and Mooney are heading towards uh, a similar, the same location. They're going here. One reason they're both going here is not necessarily to go down into the underworld, though they could potentially do that. Um, they could also be trying to get this stack of quests. People in the overworld going into the underworld must leave their quests behind before they can sink into the abyss. So um, she's got to first take care of these. It's the spider, though, she's, she could deter, she could decide to um, evade it, but she wants to try and beat them. The spider, it's got a, a nice reward. And she was successful. That's a very good roll. She would be anything with that roll. That's how good it is. Wow. She's just got the honey she needs. All she has to do is bring it to this bear and then bring the ring she gets from the bear back home. She'll have to take on the servant of the nameless first. Um, but once she's done that, she has what she needs to take on the nameless, which is, um, yeah, which is pretty huge for her. Um, so it's it's wide open and she doesn't even have that far to travel. I, I don't know if you, I, I haven't gone into this, but she's been avoiding using her broomstick uh, for a little bit. She kind of is in the area she wants to be in and if she accidentally has to come back here that would not be so good. So now it's Red Tomato's turn and he has got to, he's heading up to pick up this crystal up here but first he's got to get past this servant of the nameless and here you see, you're starting to see a real advantage that Curly has. He doesn't have to put up with these which everyone else does. Tice is running in the one here, it's already taken one health from her, it'll probably take another one. So Red Tomato, he needs to get a four or better on three dice. It's not very good odds for him. And yeah, he lost a, a health from that nameless servant. Tice, incidentally, has the um, money she needs now for the candles. She, she did a quest here. Uh, started a quest. She picked up that statuette, which she got a coin for doing, and then she also found a scary gravestone here, which gave her a coin. Um, now she's just been slowly working her way through this secret passageway. Um, the only way the, to really back down to the candle maker is through here. She, If she kept going the way she was going, she would have had to come up and down and around and then this way. So. She's going to take the hit from the servant again, but then she'll get her candlesticks, uh, be head back, be able to head back to the castle. She gets um, some some more bonuses from going there by bringing the statuette there. So things aren't doing so poorly for um, Tice right now. Things are actually pretty good. Um, so now it's Weeder's turn. She's been kind of straying away from Curly. Curly still hasn't left. The several turns have he's just kind of passed up, and Fry's just keeps trying to beat Orion. That's not happening. Both of them are still um, kind of stuck. Uh, Weeder's just been exploring at her leisure, trying to find stuff to help herself out. And she's looking down here. We'll see what she finds. Another guy that she can take somewhere. 
And so she's got to beat him. That's going to put a shadow cube on Der Ferdampte. Like that. It's getting stronger and stronger. And to beat him, she needs to get... No, she's, she's going to beat him. Yeah. Beat him quite easily. And this one she's got to take to Erebus. Weeder has just uncovered the god Hermes in her travels, which is not so good for her because in my normally in this game, the, if you if you spend a turn at sticks, it acts as a player's house. I made the rules a little different because I wanted it, uh, there to be the underworld to be a more negative place, and so um, what I determined was that sticks would not be activated until Hermes returned to the underworld. A kind of give the players a helping hand, sort of echoes um, stories of the gods helping out mortals uh, on occasion. So here's a case where Hermes, who is oftentimes benevolent, came, returned to the underworld and has um, taught all the heroes that they can bathe in sticks and it won't make them dead, it will make them live. So that's going to change things quite a bit. Um, because now Fry's can go heal, and Curly has somewhere he can actually go before, you know, he's been hanging out there for a while, partially because, you know, if he does make a break for it, where does he make a break to? Now he has a place he can make a break to, but he still has Fry's in his way. Half Pint's coming up now on the Wolves. Um, this has got to give Mooney pause. He is sitting on one stone left between life and death, and remember, he's one of those who does not come back to life. Uh, if Half Pint gets her, her paws on him, uh, he could be in some trouble. But first she's got to get past the wolves. She gets four dice. She's got to get better than six. Should not be a problem. And it was a problem. She, the wolves have claimed another victim. Before visiting the bear uh, to give it some honey, Scoots is paying a visit to this mystic. She's going to pay the mystic a coin here. And together they're going to have a special ceremony. And the ceremony was successful. That means that Scoots gets to draw any tile she wants from this bag and place it on the map. I'll let you wonder what tile that might be. mentioned last time that the other thing that Hermes does is it brings you back to stick. So Weeder is waiting right here. She's not just going to sit around though. I think she's going to explore while she's there. Um, this lets her do both things she wants to do. It lets her explore and get closer to victory and also hold the others back. So here she found Tissaphone. Uh, Tissaphone is going to probably beat her up. We'll see. She gets to Try and get a five or less. And yeah, Tissaphone takes away an experience cube, but uh, she doesn't have any, so it's okay. And Mooney's in that predicament still. Uh, Half Pine's coming towards him. She did get nicked by the wolves, but she's still quite healthy. Um, and, you know, Mooney has yet to get any sort of combat prowess going. He came here to get uh, quests, but he might find himself having to go down. Uh, back into the underworld, a place he swore he never would return to. It's horrible down there, um, but the River Styx is activated, and that's where he would go, uh, and he would be able to heal there on his next turn. Um, she could follow him, however, and kill him before he had another turn, so he has to decide whether he is going to run or whether he's going to fight, and I think if you looked at Mooney, you would realize he's not scared of any little half pint. He is going to uh, get some quests, and he's going to move forward, and he's not going to worry about her. So he chose these three, and he's going to ditch this one and this one right back there. The 
the closest of Weeder prompted Fries to explore, and he just, he came upon this Impusa, had a very, very impressive roll. He was going to have to lose one of his precious cubes, but he got the roll he needed against Orion, actually. So he's going to draw a treasure and see what this does. Ooh, it's a creature day for Dampton. Um, that's bad. So he's going to have to deal with that first. He beat the creature pretty easily. Now he has to deal with this um, this trap. And let's see if Fries can get past the trap as well. And he was able to. Whew. It's time for a joust. And we can only do the people in the overworld, all the good people who, people who would do well in the joust are in the underworld right now. So we'll start with... Um, with half pint, see how she does. She's probably got the best chance out of everyone who's upstairs currently. And she has passed the first round. And now we will do um, scoots. Scoots needs a three or better. Scoots oh, is close, but unfortunately is out of the, the joust. Now it is time for Red Tomato. Red Tomato has a one. I don't know how he could possibly do it. I think he's going to use magic trickery to help him. I think that's the only way he can even participate. Okay, and he's out of the joust. Tice's turn. Tice needs a four better. Tice is out of the joust. And Mooney is still above ground. He's got to roll snake eyes. And he's out of the joust. So it's really up to um, Half Pint to get a four. If she gets a four, her, her melee ability is maxed to the max. Or three is actually what she needed, but she did not get it. So everyone failed the joust. Hmm. Tice has taken on the wolves. She wants to show that. And she did it. She beat the wolves. Since Half Pint was unable to find the secret passageway quickly, uh, Mooney was able to get away. Uh, he's got a very good movement, by the way. I didn't really notice this when he was underground because he was just kind of going slow. But he has a movement of five. That is the same as Tice right now. That's pretty, pretty fast guy, that Mooney. And sadly for me, that's going to have to do it. We have a, I, I noticed a thing that said nine minutes. And that's either referring to uh, videotape left or battery. But I think it's battery. The battery looks to be almost out. So that's going to be it for maybe, I don't know when the power is going to be back on. For me, um, for you, it's going to seem like a bunch of videos are up in a row, but there's going to be probably a jump in terms of real time between this video and the next one. Um, I'll try to remember what's going on, though. I don't think it should be too hard. I'm going to miss these colors. I'm going to miss this world into the cold, the dark, the white.